Michelle and Morel, and today I will present you the very first results of my PhD research. I am studying the relationship between human communities and lessic landscapes in Europe. I am currently working on my PhD thesis at the University of Strasbourg under the supervision of Lou Bernard, Damien Ertlund, and Stephen Fichte. My research objectives are to determine in which ways humans have occupied unexploited lucid landscape and what effect this long and intense exploitation has had, uh, both in terms of environmental impact and archaeological sites conservation. This morning, I will quickly summarize my methodological framework to you, and then I will present my first hypothesis, and I will confirm them to my data set to answer the following question. What strategies have been put in place to occupy and exploit the Lusik era called Korosberg between the Neolithic and the Middle Ages? I will now present you my, um, the geographical and archaeological framework in which my research takes place. I choose to study the human settlement and loss because they are widespread in Europe, very fertile, but also quite sensitive to erosion. So for me, they are the perfect common frame in Europe to study long-term agricultural exploitation and its consequences. Uh, even if they are well known, here is a very quick summary of some of those properties. They are of periglacial formation, which was windblown during the Pleistocene and the early Holocene. They covered around 10% of the Earth. And in Europe, we can observe what is usually called the European Lose Belt, that goes from the very south of England to Ukraine or Russia here. As I said, the main interest of Luz for humans lies in its fertility. Thanks to their grain size composition, they are both quite easy to till, and they have enough water and nutrients for the crops to grow. Um, in our region, they seem to bear the best soils to farm, and that's why I assume their occupation and exploitation have been both long and it intense. Uh, this brings me to another specific of my work, I am interested in the diachronic evolution of this exploitation. Uh, this approach is more and more widespread, and to me, it's the only way to properly study the relationship between human and us. Uh, since my PhD work is still very much in progress, today I will only discuss the occupation of the Lusik era here, called Korosberg, um, that's in Alsace in the northeast of France, uh, not very far from Tübingen. To achieve this goal, I started to gather all available archaeological data, both in the Archaeology Heritage Services in Strasbourg and in Archaeogis. Archaeogis is a web GIS that pulls almost all available um, archaeological and environmental data. Um, it was a great help during my research since many archaeologists and geographers put their databases on the application. So, I had access to more analysis, more sites, and more bibliographical references than with the Heritage Services documentation alone. So it, um, yeah, I, it was very useful. Um, yeah. I then aggregated all the data I needed into a relational database, uh, which I projected into a GIS. It was very important for me and my study to create a multidisciplinary GIS, and that's why I integrated not only the archaeological settlements, but also the geomorphological analysis when they were available, the pollen and grain analysis, um, and some background maps such as a soil map and a DEM. Here is my soil map. It was made using the data from the soil database of the ARAA, which is an Alsatian Association for Agronomy. I have simplified their very complex soil classification uh, to create the, my five class only map uh, that you can see here. Um, in yellow, those are the loess, the lighter loess, so they are the most fertile soils. In uh, darker yellowish, uh, those are the heavy loess that are a bit less fertile and yeah, for the other soil that are not that important, you, you can see the keys here. I use this uh, simplified soil map to create also a fertility map 
to support my analysis about whole agricultural practices. I also took some time to create a confidence map of my area. Um, I really wanted to make sure my interpretation wouldn't be too biased by the previous research undertaken in the course back. My database is available for consultation and download to any archaeologist register user at the address here on the slide. And the information um, of the AARAA, uh, you can also find them very easily online and use them into your GIS. So those are the necessary information to reproduce the main part of the research I will present you this morning. Uh, with all those tools, I started a cartographic study into my GIS to answer my main question, uh, which is what strategies have been put in place to occupy and exploit the Lusik era called Korosberg between the Neolithic and the Middle Ages. Okay, before starting our journey, um, here are all the sites I kept for my study. They are mostly settlements, roads, and a few production sites. I excluded all the sites that I didn't consider being directly linked to agricultural practices. As you can see, they are very numerous, which is, in my opinion, due to the assets of Leus, but also to the very uh, vivid archaeological researches in the region. Now, we can quickly talk about the Neolithic. Um, I know our absolute dates can differ, so I gave you mine here on the slide, but it's not that important since I work on long term, and that's more the evolutions and the trends that matter to me. Uh, given my previous research during my master's degree on my bibliographical research, I was expecting a very few sites for the Neolithic and only located on the best classic soils. Um, the total number of sites, uh, which is 96 per, uh, sites, which is 24% of my corpus, is way higher than what I expected. Uh, I don't have exactly an explanation for that, apart from the very vivid archaeological researches. Uh, but the, the settlement location match what I have found for Hosari, Raz, and Alsace. They are really mostly located uh, on the best Lusik soils, and they are the most fertile. Um, it's not much surprising since at the time there was no competition for the better sites for the, the first agricultural exploitation in the region. Since I want to discuss the evolution of the settlements pattern today, I won't talk longer about the Neolithic. Um, yeah. After the Neolithic, I choose to merge the Bronze and the Iron Age into a big protohistoric phase. This is because many sites are not precisely dated and could belong to both periods. Uh, again, since I work on long term, it's not a very big problem for me. And I have also verified bronze and iron age separately. And besides the number of sites, uh, there isn't much difference in the way they settled. So for this period, I expected a rise in the number of sites and still an implantation into the best soils. Um, with 131, the rise is not as important as I thought it would be. Uh, this might be because the Neolithic sites were, were more numerous than I expected. Uh, we can see that the settlements has, are still mostly into the best soils. Um, so for that part, it's the same pattern that we saw for the Neolithic. But the main difference is that we see a little bit more settlements into the heavier loos around here. In my opinion, this is due to the iron metallurgy that <coughs> allowed this mutation thanks to the better tools. But clearly, even if they could farm on those loos, it seems that the lighter and easier to till loos were still favored. It will be interesting to assess the influence of the Roman conquest on this implantation. The general literature is quite clear about that. Uh, the Roman period is a turning point in terms of landscapes occupation. Uh, usually more sites are found, more crops are grown, and the territories are more structured. Um, are those generalities true for the Korsberg? Uh, it seems to. 
the distribution map here shows the shows us sorry that even if they are a bit less numerous, only 106 sites, the Roman settlements occupy all who era. Um, I should, of course, note here that the Roman period is also four times shorter than the proto-history. So, to me, I don't consider there is any decrease in the occupation's density. The distinction I made earlier between the lighter and the heavier loss uh, doesn't seem to affect the settlement's location anymore. Uh, another interesting fact is that on the west part, so here, we can see that the, the settlements are on the heavier loss and not on the hydromorphic soils that are just around. You see here and here. They, they really seem to choose the heavier loss. We also witnessed the arrival of a new kind of remains, which are the roads. Uh, it's just to prove that the, the territory was more structured than before. So the, the Roman pattern of installation in the Korosberg seems to validate the broad picture of the Roman period as a turning point for agricultural practice. Now we can see if those mutations have continued during the Middle Ages. I decided to work with the medieval period as a whole for the exact same reason than for the proto-history. I had too many sites that were not dated from the first or the second Middle Age. Uh, I expected to see less sites for the period and still almost only located on the best lucid soils. Only some of my expectations were met by the dataset. First of all, I have a visible and notable decrease in the number of sites. Uh, there is only 69 sites for the period, uh, and the period is twice as long as the Roman era, so there is clearly a decrease. This could be explained um, by many factors. A demographic decrease during the first Middle Age is one of the best um, propositions for that. And in my opinion, also the new patterns of occupation in the Korosberg could explain that. Um, since the sites are not uh, on the best soil here anymore, they, uh, the clear majority of them is found on the west part and mostly here on the southwest part. Uh, to me, this is the, the birth of the villages, and um, the sites are um, less numerous, but maybe bigger, and that could also explain some of the, um, yes, a part of the decrease in the number. Um, I also think that those villages that could be around here might have, have still a loose occupation, since, as you can see, we find many uh, settlement traces around them. Uh, to me, it absolutely does not mean that the very fertile were not exploited anymore. Quite the contrary uh, to me, it is proved that the broad organization of this agricultural community might have shifted from a one farm on its field around system to villages and probably communal field systems. It looks like all the um, Fertile soils were used to agricultural purposes to, to satisfy the need of the village's population. So to summarize the evolution of the strategies of occupation, I'd say that the first settlement during the Neolithic were numerous, but they don't seem to really compete for good quality soils or have a communal structural organization. The little novelty brought by the proto-historic period is that more soils were available for agriculture, thanks to the new iron tools. However, they were not used a lot. The Roman period is a shifting point between the proto-historic period and the Middle Ages. Since more soil are exploited, sites are more widespread on every kind of pedological formation. The appearance of roads also witness a more structured landscape. During the Middle Ages, villages seem to appear, which cause a clustering of settlements. It seems that the most fertile were led to agricultural practices and that the housings were put a bit aside from them. Also, it appears that both lighter and heavier loose were found. So we move from what seems to be little agricultural structures on lighter loose to a structured landscape with villages on less fertile soils on what seem to be communal fields on less. 
This morning, I presented you the evolution of the strategies of agricultural implantation in the Korosberg. This diachronic study is only one step of my research. Indeed, this long and dense human occupation can't have happened without consequences on the landscape or even on the archaeological remains themselves. Next, I'd like to confront my results to erosion patterns and address the question of the reliability of our repartitions map. I will also compare the evolution of the Korosberg to other lucid landscapes in Europe, such as the south coast of England and the north of Prague in Czech Republic. Even if I didn't have time to discuss the limit of my approach this morning, I really hope I made clear the advantages of using pedological information to understand some aspects of the occupation's pattern. I thank you for listening.